welcome to the Water Street Mill on Water Street in Holliston. Perhaps you've seen this building, either by driving by it or perhaps you espied it while you were walking along the rail trail and wondered just what it was all about. Well, this building has much to do with the history of Holliston. It started in 1891. Several people in Holliston got together and said, we've got to do something about all of the shoe workers that we have in Holliston. After all, a lot of the old factory buildings were starting to become obsolete. A lot of the owners were dying off, but we still had a lot of people who were really good at building shoes. So a bunch of people got together in Holliston and decided, this is what we're going to do in order to save the shoe operations in Holliston. We are going to start a stock company, the Holliston Shoe Company. We're going to sell shares in this company and we will provide this marvelous building here for employment for the people of Holliston. Everybody was enthusiastic about this and rich and not so rich bought stock in the company. And in 1891, the factory was built at a cost of $22,000. So, what happened next? Well, since it was just a stock company, we have to get somebody that will enter the building and start operations building shoes again. And that they did. In 1891, after a big party up on the third floor, they celebrated a new beginning in Holliston shoe industry. And they were able to find a company that was willing to come and occupy the building. It was the Beals Company from Brockton. Now that's just the beginning of the story. Now, once the Holliston Shoe Company was able to procure somebody to set up shop here, the Beals Company of Brockton, they moved in just about a month after the building was finished. So in 1891, we had a new shoe operation going on in Hollis and everybody was really happy about it. But something happened. The Beals Company, after 18 months, found out that there was a bit of a dilemma working in Holliston. The dilemma was about fire insurance and how much it costs. So, unfortunately, the Beals Company left after 18 months. The building was virtually empty. There were a few small companies that used part of the building, but not much happened here. And certainly it was not a shoe company uh, on the size that they were looking for initially when they built that building in 1891. And so by 1898, all operations that had been in this building were gone and from 1898 to 1908 the building was virtually empty so you can imagine you can imagine all that money that was placed into this building and everybody's anticipated profits from it all went bust now some of the more uh, wealthy money men in Holliston they didn't really lose all that money but anybody who just bought a few shares and it was pretty dear money to them at that time. Everybody lost. Shoe workers started to drift away from Holliston. They were moving over to Marlboro, Natick, Framingham, anywhere else where there were shoe operations where they could find employment. So it was a pretty sad time in Holliston. But this building still stood here, empty, from 1898 until 1908. In 1908, there was a most unfortunate fire over in Kachichuit. And Arthur A. Williams in Kachichuit was without a factory. And so he looked around, looking for a new place to start up the business or rebuild. And John Clancy and Holliston, who had a shoe shop here too, encouraged Arthur Ashley Williams to come over to Holliston and set up shop in this vacant building and he did within two months he was back up in operation and he was starting a whole new era 
in Holliston's shoe industry history with the Arthur A. Williams Company. And is the rest history? It certainly is. Now, this great building here, one thing that impressed everybody in 1891 and also in 1908, both times they mentioned all the windows. 600 windows, they said, were in this building. Now, in 1891, they were saying that it was in order to give every worker in the building a chance to look out of their own window. Great thing, but that wasn't the reason why they did it. This was the 19th century way of using solar power in a large factory. The windows allowed in sunlight and also heat. And, uh, you know, when you have to start work at like 5 a.m. in the morning on those summer days when the sun was up, you worked from sun up to sundown using the buildings as light and also for a little bit of ambient heat as well. So solar power is not something that we just see today. It was used all the time. People knew how to put a building in a certain location in order to get the maximum effect from sunlight and sun heat. And so they did with this building as well. So 600 windows, I did spend some time trying to count them all, but that's what they said was here. And so Arthur Ashley Williams started his shoe factory here in 1908 and made shoes for heavy industry. He was well known for the steel toed boot. And that's where he made his fortune. He stated that he intended to make 3,500 pairs of shoes a day here at this factory. Probably got pretty close to that, if not right on the number. So Arthur Ashley Williams, who stated that this was going to be the, the, ultimate, uh, the ultimate thing in his life that he was going to accomplish, this was the company where he did it. Here we are on the back side of the building, a side that most people don't even see. But as you can see, there was no, no scrimping on windows. They still had them facing to the east as well. So one thing that is interesting about this building, which we can see over time, are the smokestack and also the copula way up there. Now those are two features that appeared in the very first pictures of the building. But there was a third structure that was up on, on the roof there. And what it was, was the 19th century way of fire suppression in a very short way. After all, remember all the trouble that they had as far as uh, poor Mr. Williams being burnt out of Kachichuit and the high price of fire insurance that forced the Beals Company to go back to Brockton after 18 months. But there was a structure up there. But a lot of the insurance companies still didn't want to sell any of their insurance to companies in Holliston. As a matter of fact, back around the 1890s, one of the uh, insurance company's periodicals that would come out uh, stated in it that there were three places that they avoided selling fire insurance to. They were Hopkinton, Holliston, and Hell. Therefore, Holliston was still under this terrible, terrible guise of not being able to support a company with a large insurance for fire. So therefore, there was a third large water tower with a tank on it that was connected to the building. It was quite a while before Holliston lost its reputation as a bad place to run a business and buy fire insurance. But finally they did. And uh, Mr. Williams was able to get out from under that particular problem. So on the back, Lots of windows still, and lots of ways to keep the sun coming in and the heat on and keep the price down, at least, of utilities. Arthur Williams did so well in his new location here on Water Street that he was able to build an addition to the complex. And so, in 1912, he put up this building that is on the opposite side from the old factory building. 
But there were a few little interesting things that he added to that building. And one of them has to do with the famous tunnel. Few people know about it. Very few people have ever been into it. But you can still get a little hint of where that tunnel is by simply looking at Water Street, the road. And you will see a double line of cracks on the pavement right there. That is where the tunnel is. Now, it used to be years ago that when you came down Water Street, you could kind of feel a little bit of a hump. When you went over that area, you could tell where it was. But now, it's kind of settled down a little bit, and the only thing that shows its location now, that tunnel that ran from the big old building to the little new building, is right here still underneath Water Street. So, the Water Street Mill today, home to a lot of small businesses, startups, lofts, a great place to start a company or just keep a company going. And in, in the spirit of Arthur A. Williams, I think he'd be very proud of what is going on here today and very glad that the building is still here. From its beginning in 1891 up until today, it still stands as Holliston's great hope for small business. Now, of course, 1891 is when it was built. That's when the party was up on the third floor. And now I see, over here, 1895. Wrong year. Wrong year. Four years off is a whole big deal of business, for heaven's sakes. So, hey, you know, why did that happen? Well, an occupant of the building back in the early 2000s found a piece of paper in the bottom of the mill that had the date 1895 on it and decided that must be it without getting any, into any of the history of it in order to find out uh, or deal with any accuracy. And you know what? A Hollison historian's work is never done.